Hey guys, it's Fonsky here, and today we're back in Elite Dangerous, and I'm actually in the update 1.2 beta. As you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen, it's actually beta 2 already. Uh, the beta only just came out yesterday, and it's already been updated to, well, beta 2, as I said. Um, so I'm not going to have a look at the entire thing uh, this time in this video. This uh, update is the Wings update, so there's actually a fair bit going on in it. But in this video, I'm just going to concentrate on the two new ships that were added to the game which are the Vulture and the Fertilance. Fertilance, whatever, I don't know. Uh, so let's go to the shipyard, and at this system, or at this station, Dalton Gateway, every ship has actually been reduced to 100 credits, uh, which means I could also buy like an Anaconda or something, and I think I'll actually do that. I was actually planning on doing a similar thing in the last beta, but they, not every ship was 100 credits in uh, Update 1.1 beta. But anyway, let's, uh, we'll worry about that later. So this is the first ship that we'll look at, so this is the Vulture. Uh, it's described as being a space superiority fighter. Now what's interesting about this, it has two large hard points for weapons, but apparently no other weapons hard points. So that's, uh, at least I find that interesting. Uh, so top speed 210 meters per second, boosting up to 340, seems to be fairly maneuverable. Um, and yeah, so uh, let's, let's buy this. Limited cargo apparently, so, but whatever. So, uh, well, I'll store my ASP, and if I need more credits to fit this ship out, then I'll actually sell the ASP, because that should sell for a fair bit. Uh, well, definitely more than 6 million, because that's the base cost. So, the problem with these ships being 100 credits is that we can't actually tell what the, uh, the overall cost is, but we can kind of estimate it, so I'll show you that in a bit, but let's, uh, let's have a look around this cockpit. So that's pretty cool, and Truck R doesn't like me moving my head around too far. But you do have a fair bit of visibility by the looks of it. So that's nice. Obviously a single seater. So yeah, that's that's really cool. And once we're actually flying this, because of the new debug camera, I'll actually be able to have a look at the outside of the ship, which will be pretty cool. It's the first time we've really been able to do that in this game. Um, but first off, let's take a quick look at the outfitting. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on outfitting. Um, I mean... Once, is, once the game hits live and everybody has all their money and everything, that's kind of a weird profile. But yes, yeah, so I'm not going to spend too long outfitting this, but what I was saying about estimating the cost is if you go to the armor and you go to the military-grade composite, the value of this is normally pretty close to the value of the ship. So the military-grade composite for my ASP is almost 6 million credits. The ASP, of course, costs about 6 million credits. So using, using that sort of thing as uh, to give you an idea, this ship could cost around 20 million, uh, which is pretty pricey. And from what I've read, the Fertilance could cost around 100 million credits. So, <laughs> obviously we'll have to wait. Or, I mean, if, if you go to a different station, I think that these ships may be full price, even in the beta. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, we'll obviously find out what the full price is once the update hits uh, live. So let's see what weapons we can put on here. I don't think you can get large mounted multi cannons or anything like that, but you can get... Um, we can get pulse lasers, obviously, there's 70,000. Burst lasers, um, what, what else have we got? We've got cannons, which I could use, don't really want to though. Hmm. There's the cannons, 600,000 credits each. Plasma accelerator, which is 3 million, that's the uh, large mounted one. Alright, 20 million for a beam laser turret? Sure, why not? Let's, uh, let's just do a couple of, I don't know, uh, pulse lasers, I guess. We'll just keep it, keep it simple. There we go. And I have to wait for all this to update and everything. Let's see what this looks like. I haven't actually seen a large mounted pulse laser. Oh, there we go. It's big and fancy. Cool. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going for the gimbaled ones because I'm lazy and it's easy to keep them on target. And there it is. And it looks like my power plant will be kind of close, but it's not going to be a problem. Uh, very short jump range, at least in default loadout, or default settings. I could also put on one of these new shield boosters, which uh, would basically increase your shield capacity. Uh, as the description says, strengthens the active shield if powered, multiple boosters stack in effectiveness. So that's cool. You got E, so there's the A ones up here, which do, uh, they do use a fair bit of power. So... Yep, that's all good. The problem is, all everything else costs real money, as you've probably already been able to tell. So that's one of the things I really don't like about how they do the betas for this game. Um, it would be nice if they just gave everybody like a billion credits for testing purposes on the testing server, or if they reduced the cost of everything for, to 100 credits, something like that. Just 
I mean, just to make it easy to actually test a ship as it would be used in the real game, you know, because you're not going to just fly with E-Class everything when you're actually flying around, right? You're going to you're going to want to have it like A-Class or whatever, or whatever outfitting actually works for the ship. So the thing is, you need the credits to actually buy that and to test that properly. So but anyway, that's just a bit of an irritation for me. Um, okay, let's just go D-Class thrusters, because that's what I can afford. And actually... Actually, let me uh, let me just sell the ASP then. Hold on, I'm going to cut a fair bit of this out so we don't spend too much time on it. Alright, so I'm not sure how much of the outfitting I'm going to cut out but uh, like in editing, but this is what I've gone with. So I've got two large size gimbaled pulse lasers, I've got a shield booster, I've got a kill warrant scanner, I've got most of this stuff at either A or B class um, for the most part, so that's all good. Can I put anything fancy on here? What do these decals look like? Yeah. Can't really see them because of the uh, paint scheme. Uh, fuck it, let's put a skull right there. Sure. Cool. Alright, so that's the that's the Vulture outfitted. Let's go for a flight. Shall we? I actually don't know what size pad this uses. I'm guessing it would be either medium or small. I can't imagine that this is a large ship. Anyway. And you can see the... Uh, how the ship actually looks in the diagnostic. It's got a, a really interesting shape. Basically, as soon as I'm out of here, um, once I'm out of the docking, sort of out of the station and everything, I'm going to use the debug camera and we'll actually get a chance to see the full profile of this ship. And I'll actually, uh, I'll stop talking for a little bit so we can hear the engines and everything as well. Uh, so the engines, nothing too impressive, if I'm honest. They don't seem particularly loud or quiet or anything like that. Uh, and that was a Facebook message. I really should have closed that. Okay, so let me uh, point the ship in a straight line. And then, so that's, that's going at around medium speed or whatever. Let's go up to full speed, why not? Hit the booster as well. And then we're going to hit Control alt space and you can see we get this message entering debug camera mode. And now the best way of thinking of this debug camera is as a separate ship. It controls like you're flying a ship and you actually can't fly your own ship. You can't control your own ship while you're in this debug camera. But yeah, so you can, you just can't fly around it using the same controls as you would with a normal ship. And it's just so cool. And so you, you know, you see all the, uh, all the screenshots and everything from the developers, this is how they take those screenshots, where they're looking at the outside of the ships and everything. So you can immediately see there's some really cool opportunities for screenshots and all that sort of thing. Uh, for me, video thumbnails, for example, that's something I would use it for. It obviously doesn't like flying around behind the thrusters for whatever reason. But uh, it's, it's just really cool. And I mean, obviously, you don't have to use this to look at your own ship. You could obviously you could pop into this debug camera to take photos or photos, take uh, screenshots of like stars or whatever as well, planets, whatever you want. And oh, god damn, I need to close that tab. Somebody's just fucking spamming me with messages. But anyway, so that's um, yeah, this is just really cool. So that is a really nice feature. Okay, okay, so let's uh let's get out of this camera. So to get out of it, you just press Control Alt Space again, and I'm going to fly to a nav beacon. Uh, or maybe not a nav beacon. I'll get one of these asteroid belts and hopefully a resource extraction site or something. Problem is the nav beacon in this uh, in this system is a hundred thousand light seconds away. So it takes it. Or I think it is. Maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah it is. So let's uh, let's go one of these asteroid belts and we'll see if we can find something to shoot at. Okay, so I'm in this uh, asteroid thing. We've got these NPCs here. You can actually see they're in a wing. So there's these two, uh, I think these two sidewinders, or not two sidewinders, this adder and that sidewinder. They're both wanted and I think they're both in a wing together. One thing I've already noticed about this ship, it is maneuverable. Once you've got it in the right, uh, in the sweet spot for throttle and everything, it is maneuverable. So let's uh, put all my power to the weapons we'll, and we'll open up on this guy who is a master and we'll see what we can do. 
Shields are down. I've got, well, I can fire forever, basically. Uh, I'm not using very much weapons charge at all. And he's down. There we go. That was easy. Super easy. I was expecting his uh, Sidewinder buddy to join in on the fight there, but he didn't. Let's uh, open up on him. So it's going pretty easy, going pretty well. And he's not putting up any fight at all really, which is a little odd. And he's gone. Right, okay. And one thing I noticed, not much of a rebuy cost for this ship either. Uh, especially given how many credits I spent. The rebuy cost is only 274,000. That's, uh, that's not much at all, so... I think these guys are all security ships. Let's see that this guy's in a wing as well. So yeah, you can see uh, they do say they're in a wing. That's obviously part of the wings update. So the NPCs fly around in wings as well as players. But uh, let me let me fly around and I'll see if I can find some more NPCs to shoot at. But uh, so far it seems to be going really well. Uh, this pulse laser set up, it can just keep firing and not run out of charge. Or at least it will run out of charge eventually. But you can see, you know, I'm just holding the trigger down and it's really not struggling at all. Obviously that is with four... Uh, full pips to the weapons. So if I put two to the weapons, I'll just reset it so it's in its default state. It will run out firing like that. So, but you do get a good bit of uh, shots off anyway. But yeah, so I'll cruise around, look for some more people to shoot at, and hopefully we'll find something. Scan detected. Okay, so I've actually moved into a USS. Uh, this ASP, as we can see, <laughs> being attacked, is wanted. So let's jump in on this action. Target Not that I'm actually going to do that much, given the NPCs are already tearing him up. Ooh, don't shoot him. There we go, that's actually a security service eagle. And I've run out of charge because I didn't put any power to my weapons. Oh, there we go. Well, that took him down easy. Wasn't a really fair fight, or anything Target close to being destroyed. fair. Uh, but anyway. So, well... It's taken me a very long time just to find that NPC. Um, so I'm actually going to head back to the station. But overall, this feels like a pretty good fighter. Um, it's very maneuverable, especially when you're flying around at you know the the right throttle setting. Uh, it does move around nice and easy. Uh, the two weapons hard points it'll depend really depend on loadouts, but I think it might limit you a bit because you won't be able to do the whole multi cannon setup or anything like that. Well, you can, but obviously you can fit medium weapons onto large hard points. But preferably, I'd probably I'd probably stick with large weapons for the large hard points. Um, but but yeah, that's something we'll have to figure out uh, as we get more and more used to the ship. But in general, I think it's a pretty cool ship. Um, I guess the one thing that's really going to matter is how much is it going to cost. I mean, at 20 million credits, it might be a bit much, but we still don't know for sure that that's the price. Uh, we're kind of just guesstimating that based on the price of the, of the military armor. So, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. This, uh, this is a nice combat vessel. So let's, um, let's head back to the station and I'll check out the Ferdlands. Okay, so let's open up the shipyard and find the fertile lands. There it is. Okay, and I really like the profile of this. Uh, it just looks like it's going to be a really cool looking ship. But anyway, so this is, it's kind of supposed to be a high class luxury sort of vessel. Uh, described as being fast, well armed, luxurious accommodation, high quality components fitted as standard. Um, so, yeah. Apparently made by Zorgan Peterson, although upgraded by Saad Kruger. I don't know, Zorgan Peterson is the company that makes the hauler, whereas Saad Kruger is the company that makes the orca. So, there you go. You learned something new now. Unless you already knew that. Uh, anyway, top speed, 260 meters per second, boosting at 350. Uh, maneuverability, kind of, what's that, 6 out of 10, I guess? <laughs> Whatever that means. Uh, okay, that's all good. 6 utility mounts, that's a fair bit. Um... I guess that'll be... Well, that's that's actually a lot of utility maps, come to think of it. Four medium hard points and one huge hard point. The huge hard point is the same sort of thing that, that the Anaconda has for its massive plasma accelerator. So that's uh, that's interesting. That could be a lot of fun, playing around with that. Of course, I won't, be able, I won't actually be able to afford a huge plasma accelerator, but anyway. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like a lot of um, cargo racks, although that's just what it comes with by default. So we might find there's a lot more storage in there or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's buy it. 
and uh, I'll buy it new and if I need to then I'll sell the vulture separately yes confirm and let's see what this cockpit looks like I'm expecting it to be pretty swanky hopefully but we just have to wait for it to load in oh there we go well it's kind of cool, I guess. Not as swanky as, as I was hoping for. But Imperial Clipper still has the best cockpit, I think. Um, well, there we go. <laughs> I love how it's got the same... Every single ship in the galaxy has the same pilot seats. Whichever company makes those seats must be making an absolute fortune, because everybody's using the same fucking seats. Uh, okay. The visibility, pretty good. You got a lot of room to look around. Up at the back as well. So that's, uh, that's all good. Cool. Alright. Uh, well, let's take a look at the outfitting then. And we'll see what we can see. Ooh, that looked fancy. Yeah, that's that's a pretty awesome looking ship. Uh, that's, that's really cool. I like that. I like how it's actually got a decent paint job that you haven't had to pay real money for as well. That's always nice. Um, okay, so this is our huge hard point. Let's see what we can put in here. Let's just keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Get past all the crap. There we go, Plasma Accelerator, 13.7 million credits, nearly 13.8. Or we could put a 20 million beam laser turret on it. Um, yeah, so this, I don't have a hope in hell of being able to buy this, unfortunately, unless I figure out a way of exploiting credits in this. Um, so what else can we do? So we've got these medium hard points, all these utility mounts, internals. What can we do with the internals? So this is, again, using the same kind of guesstimation that we did uh, with the Vulture. 92 million credits for the military-grade composite. Uh, if we're right about uh, that sort of pricing, that puts this at a fairly high price point, uh, this ship. 241 million for the reactive surface. There you go. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's a bit pricey. What else can we do? 5 mil for a power plant. There's a truck driving past my window. So looks like the longest jump range it'll be able to get is 14.19 light years. That's, uh, that's not very far really. I'd expect this to be able to jump a bit further than that. But I guess because it's only class 4, it won't be jumping that far. Okay. It's got a size 6 power distributor. I guess because it's got that huge weapon that it needs to fire. Or it needs to be able to fire. 3 million credits just for that. Uh, what else? How about cargo capacity? So it won't be carrying much cargo. You could put a size 5 rack in here, which is 32. But you're not going to be carrying much cargo with this. So this is not going to be really used as a trading ship. And even if you wanted to use it as a trading ship, uh, that jump range isn't fantastic. But okay, well let me let me sell my, um, my Vulture and we'll fit this out. Okay, so this is how I've loaded it out. I've gone for something a bit different this time. So we've got four gimbaled multi-cannons, and then we've got a large plasma accelerator. I've used the plasma accelerator before, although that was medium mounts on a Cobra, um, and I wasn't too fond of them, but, you know, we've got this huge hard point. We might as well stick something in it. So we'll just see how it goes. And I haven't used a large one before, so whatever. We've also got two shield boosters, got an A-class and a D-class. They should, you know, combine their powers and become even more powerful or something. Also got a kill bar scanner. I just left the rest of these empty because I'm running close to my power limit. I uh, got a C class power plant, B class thrusters, B class frame shift drive, uh, C six power distributor, A four sensors, and yeah, the rest of it's pretty much standard. Just using standard shields as well. Um, I suppose I could try and upgrade these. Actually, I kind of forgot about the shields if I'm honest. All right, so I was going to upgrade the shield generator, but. Um, Anything better than E4 uses too much power, and I can't afford a better power plant. So anyway, so this is what we're rolling with. So uh, let's get out of this station, and I'll have to set my fire groups. Give me one second to do that. Let's make that. Sure. Okay. So, let's... And I'm not sure if this is a large ship or a medium ship, actually. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to tell by the pad that I'm on. It looks like it might be a medium ship, but again, I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so we'll do the same thing as I did last time. So we'll, uh, 
we'll get out of here and then I'll go into the debug camera and I'll also try to listen to the engines a bit and I'll have to be careful flying this out my shields haven't actually come online yet so I don't want to bump into anything or anyone okay so let me slow down a bit and then I'll stop talking scan detected Alright, so that has a different engine note, uh, especially with the boosting and everything. That's pretty cool. So yeah, I'd say the, uh, the engine noises for this are a bit more impressive than the ones for the uh, Vulture, if I'm honest. But anyway. So it's not a... Not a highly manoeuvrable ship, but it's actually not bad. So, okay. Let's, uh, let's get out of the firing range. Or oh, the um, no fire zone. Looks like we're already out of it. Let's see how this goes with its weapons. Shields online. So, we'll fire off the plasma accelerator, shall we? Oh, okay. It took a while to deploy. It actually took longer to deploy the plasma accelerator. Alright, that's cool. Looks like a reasonable fire pattern. Most of the weapons are in a similar sort of area by the looks of it. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into our debug camera. Cool. And that is the ship. Looks like that's interesting. There's another little uh, looks like little canopy sort of thing down there. And the controls aren't playing nice at the moment. There we go. That is a really cool looking ship. I really like how that looks. I mean, I like the adder and the hauler as well, the design of those, and this uh, is kind of following off the same sort of thing. So, no, it's really cool. Alright, there we go. Sometimes, uh, using even though I know exactly how the controls work for this, I'm still managing to screw it up a little bit just with this T-Boat camera. It takes a little, bit, a little bit of getting used to, I guess. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's a really cool looking ship. I really like that. Unfortunately, I'll probably never have the credits to afford it if it costs as much as we kind of expect that it's going to. And the engines look cool as well, so I go down a little bit. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do once I get out of the Debo camera is I'll actually jump to another system and I'll just go into a... Uh, nav beacon or something there and we'll see how it does in a bit of combat so let's do that now okay so I'm in a low intensity conflict zone which has plenty of pew pew going on so uh, let's see how this goes and obviously you have to pick a faction and I'm in solo mode so I don't have to worry about players or anything like that so let's just pick one we'll do that one why not yeah, I'm just in solo mode so that I don't get blown up too quickly or anything like that, if I'm honest. Um, anyway, let's pick a target. There's a condor there. And I should have my hard points out, that would probably help. Alright, who's closest? Oh, let's go for this condor then. I think he's in range. I won't need to use the plasma accelerator on him. Looks like his shields are already down. Yep, there he goes. Uh, let's go for this guy. Oh. Uh, went for the snapshot with the plasma accelerator and tried to hit it. Uh, oh, that was close. Hello. I do want to hit him with the accelerator. Too close to him now. Stupid eagles. Why won't you let me hit you with my big under gun? Attack. Apparently I'm under attack. Oh, uh, come on. Aha, I hit him. There we go, that was good. 
Alright, but an eagle's not really a fair fight. Let's find something better. Ass. Shields, shields are down, but we'll go for him. Under attack. Okay, let's go for a long range shot. Probably won't hit him. No, he avoided that. Avoided that. Oh, he avoided that too. Uh, come on. There we go. Didn't avoid that. Didn't do much to him, but still. Target shields online. And this is the problem with this loadout. I don't really have any beam weapons to take down his shields with. Target I mean, multi cannons do work, online. so. And I'll put more power on my weapons. Give him a bit of plasma accelerator. Love. You can't see it. Well, you can't see the shot, but it is actually hitting him. Under attack. Oh, you saw that one. Cool. So, I have apparently been taking hits. Uh, doesn't look like my shields have noticed anything, though. Let's try to find... There we go. There's an anaconda. I mean, he's already half dead, though. So... Again, not the uh, greatest test. Oh, that's that shooting me. Target shields offline. Target shields offline. Oh, my shield's going down. Fucking hell. I didn't lose them. Uh, I'm just trying to attack. Oh, there we go. Okay, my shields have actually taken a fair bit of damage. Remember that I am using E-class shields here. Just with a couple of extenders. Or boosters, whatever they call them. What's this? Why can't I target him? I'm trying to use the uh, target under reticle button. It's just uh, an eagle or something. I don't know why I couldn't target him target like that. Shields target shields online. Target shields online. There he is. Target shields online. Elite eagle. Okay. <laughs> that was a bit stupid. I'll see if I can get a plasma accelerator hit on him. Uh, close. But the shields did hold their own. Uh, if I didn't have those shield boosters, they probably would have died. But they didn't. God damn it, fucking eagle. I've got all my power to my shields, so um, I don't have the power to like, maneuver around. I could just flick a bit of power to the engines, but I'd rather keep it how it is. I if I hit the booster. I don't think that helped. Fighting small ships in big ships can be annoying. I mean, he is elite, so an elite NPC, so he's kind of designed to be slightly more difficult to face, but still. Let's go for this plasma accelerator shot. Oh. Under attack. Oh, my shields are about to go down. Something else is shooting at me as well. So I was trying to boost away, I guess. I probably should have done that a while ago. Target shields offline. Interesting, some Target of these, uh, online. some of the ships in Target here are flying in offline. wings as well. It's kind of cool. This guy's on 2%. I wonder if I could just fly in and steal this kill. It's possible. That only did 1% damage. Oh. Hey, I got it too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Target shields offline. Target shields offline. Target shields online. Let's go off this Cobra. Don't want to fire from too far away just because the, the shot is almost guaranteed to miss. But from this range, once I get it lined up, 
There we go. And that's why I put the plasma accelerator on. The idea was, hopefully you get one shot, maybe two shots, take down the shields, and then just unload with the multi-cannons. And uh, so far it seems to be working. So that's pretty cool. And there we go. So he's down. It takes a bit sitting there with the multi cannons, but it does work. All that for 4,000 credits. Let's see what we can do about this viper. Come on, there Aha! Beautiful. This, uh, this loadout actually kind of works. At least in this situation, where you've got the NPCs all focusing on each other. It'd probably be a bit harder to use the plasma accelerator in a normal combat thing like that. Although maybe it wouldn't be really, I don't know. To be honest, I'm, uh, I'm just a little bit surprised at how well it's working. Uh, just gonna do another what five percent damage, hopefully. I think you might actually be a little bit far away. Oh no, we are hitting him. Let's see if that hits. It's just takes the pot shots. Oh my plasma accelerator is reloading. Come on. I think I must have disabled his thrusters or something. Looks like he's just sitting there spinning. There we go, zero percent. Well, there we go. Let's uh, let's jump out of here. So that's the Fertilands. That's uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know what niche it's supposed to fill in the game, like what role it's supposed to take. Um, the fact that it's got a huge hard point would kind of imply that it's on the same level as the Anaconda, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe not the Anaconda. Maybe the Python or something. I don't know. Uh. I like, I really like how it looks. It flies pretty nicely. Uh, it wasn't too great at low speeds. In fact, it was pretty bad at low speed. Although, uh, because of the shield situation, I had my full power to the shields rather than the engines. But um, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd use it as a dedicated combat ship, but at the same time, I don't really know what else it's good for, given that it's got a pretty short jump range and not much cargo space. So, I don't know. I don't know, you'd have to... I mean, if you've got the credits to buy it, then I guess maybe you just want another ship or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what the super rich do. The 1% of Elite, or something like that. But, well, so those are the two new ships, the Vulture and the Fertilance. They're, uh, they're both pretty cool. And it'll be really interesting to see how they play out once they're in the proper game. But I think I'll end this one here. So, there will be a video coming up on Update 1.2. I don't know if I'm going to wait for it to be fully released until I do that, though. But uh, there will be something coming out about that at some point <laughs> so that's uh that's super helpful i know but yeah so until next time i've been Voska. i hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching